Greetings, YouTube, and a happy Veterans Day to all my fellow veterans out there. Thank you for your service. Before we get started on my initial impressions of the Polar Vantage V, I definitely wanted to insert this video showing the paperwork that I mentioned in that secret compartment and also give a little bit of a backstory of how I got here to tr even trying out the Polar Vantage V after coming from a Garmin watch. Um, initially having a Garmin Phoenix 5, which for the most part didn't give me any major issues with um, heart rate monitoring from the wrist outside of when I was working out. And of course, during those times, I would use a chest strap. But when I went on to try out the Phoenix 5 Plus and the Phoenix 5 X Plus, I ended up switching about five or six different ones through customer service, which is a very good customer service, mind you. But due to their disclaimer saying inherent limitations, I just didn't get any good heart rate um, results from the wrist. So after hearing about the Polar Vantage V, I wanted to go ahead and give Polar a try. But I did so initially through the Polar A370, which for the most part is a really good watch. More on that later. Here we go with that initial software out the box. Well, actually after the software update, this is not 1.2.3. This was the update before that. Still a little buggy when it came to the touch screen. That's the backlight that I'm clicking on, which is pretty good. I don't have an issue with the backlight. I've heard some people say they have issues. Um, for me, I always keep my gadgets on the lowest dim settings um, because I don't like bright lights in my face. So the lighting on this watch is, is perfect for me. Um, on that bottom left buttons, you have the orthostatic test, settings, and start a workout. On the orthostatic test, you will need a chest strap, either an H7 or an H10. And during that test, they'll have you stand, lay down, and relax. And it will go off of your heart rate variability, which in turn will give data, which will allow the Recovery Pro feature to measure your recovery time. Over here, we're at the pair and sync part of the general settings. As you see, it's still a little bit more of a delay with the swipe. Either I'm not getting the right sweet spot or I'm just too much of a novice as far as um, getting to those menus. So I prefer to use the buttons. Um, with the continuous heart rate, this is the one minute heart rate so I have that on. Yes, it will use more battery, but so far with the watch, I've been getting about a legit five days of um, use, even with um, about an hour and a half to two hours of um, workout time. So back on to the sub menus, we're on the recovery feedback section of it. I have it set to on. That is one of the main perks of this watch and one of the main features that they promote about it is the recovery pro so looking forward to seeing how the feedback is after the three weeks to a month um, overall when it comes to working out with the watch i can say this is the first one that i seriously do not have to have a chest strap with more on that in a second um over here is the orthostatic scheduling you are you know suggested to set a schedule of three times a week so i could go ahead and set mine for sunday wednesday and friday um on those days it'll alert you in the morning to go ahead and do your orthostatic test one thing i will say working nights i do wish that it would allow you to do a am or pm test but you know maybe later on in an update if it doesn't happen i won't ding the watch grades for it because i still think it's a really good watch at this part you can set the watch face you either to analog or digital you can put your time to 12 or 24 hour 
You can also set the first day of the week. Um, all in all, it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. This particular face that I'm at right now will show that exertion. But um, right here, I'm getting ready to do a test where I compare the A370 with the um, Polar Vantage V um, heart rate. One thing I will say about the A370 is that it is a very, very good heart rate monitor on that watch. Um, it doesn't have an always on display, but if you're looking for a watch to get you started at a low cost into the Polar ecosystem, it's not a bad way to go. It will give you good readings while running. Um, not so much while cycling, but there's always a chest strap for that. Also, there's a Polar app um, called Bo Polar Beat, which is also pretty good. Um, you would need a chest strap for that. But um, I find myself using that sometimes when I'm running, um, at least before I bought the Polar Vantage V. So here I'm putting the A37 on my right wrist, and I have the Polar Vantage V on my left. I'm looking to get hopefully have these readings be within five of each other five beats per minute of each other and um here we are that one says 98 beats per minute and my polar 8370 is at let me see if i can read that one is at 101 right now the, the 8370 is at 102 so right neck and neck with one another so no complaints on that front. All in all, when it comes to GPS, I would say it grades well with GPS. The tracks aren't the prettiest, but it's pretty close to accurate as far as the distance measure measurements. When, it, when I'm doing calisthenics, jumping jacks, jump ropes, or anything like that, push-ups, etc., it really does well with the readings. I would say the key though is making sure you find a sweet spot with your wrist. If it's for me about a half an inch over the wrist bone, I'm good to go. But anything else, it just comes out with a lot of latency. So as far as being able to get a workout without having to use a chest strap, I definitely recommend this watch. I'll be looking to do another video where I compare this with a chest strap in the A370. But until the next time, to all safe travels on the road and all the best. Thank you for watching this video.